As you know, one of our important jobs in the Anti-Defamation League of the B'nai B'rith is to keep a close watch on anti-Semitic activities in the United States. The old German-American Bund of the 30s was financed by the German government itself, and it disappeared with the outbreak of World War II. Now, the current Nazi splinter group started about 10 years after the war with George Lincoln Rockwell, who was a brilliant manipulator of publicity. He could always seduce the newspapers and television into giving him coverage, even though he never had more than 500 followers nationally. Now, Colin and his Chicago group are one of the tiny splinter parties across the country. Now, I, I don't believe in underestimating anti-Semitism, but our best professional opinion is that Colin and groups like his are so isolated from American realities that they do not present any kind of present danger to the safety and security of Jews. How do they work? They exploit the anger and outrage of decent people to get what they can't achieve for themselves. Attention, publicity. They create trouble to get in the newspapers and on television. Now, over the years, we have developed a tactic to deal with this. Quarantine. Our advice to Jewish communities is to refuse to give them the confrontation they want. When they show up with 15 or 20 of their shabby Erzat stormtroopers, Turn your back. Don't give the television camera anything exciting to take a picture of. The worst thing you can do is to give them a platform, national exposure to spread their anti-Semitic garbage. That's, uh, <laughs> that's about it. I'll be glad to answer any questions uh, about developing a game plan to deal with this situation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rosen. That's all there is? I would like to introduce... I mean, the man came all the way from downtown. That's all he's going to say. The rabbi's talking. In Skokie. And he's always expressed the close cooperation of the non-Jewish and Jewish communities. What is he talking about? It is a about, source of game? great personal strength. Well, well, what are we, a football friend. team or Ladies something? Ladies and gentlemen, the Chicago mayor of Skokie, Why does honor say Albert Smith. <laughs> Thank you, Rabbi Steinberg. Mr. Rosen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to make something absolutely clear to all my Jewish friends here this evening. And that is that your Christian neighbors here in the village of Skokie hold hoodlums like Frank Collin and his ilk in the utmost contempt. We share your outrage and your concern. And we intend to act in utmost good faith to assure the safety... Excuse me. ...and uh, the protection... I beg your pardon. I would like to ask a question. Well, yes, sir. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have in a moment or two. However, there well, are... With respect, Your Honor, not you. The other one, the one from the Chicago Anti-Defamation. I think we should hold all questions for Mr. Rosen until... He just said that he would be happy to answer questions. I'm sorry if I'm out of order, but I, I do have a question. You know, it's, it's all right. It's all right. I'd be happy to defer a question to Mr. Rosen. Go ahead, sir. Ask your question. I am Ma Max Feldman. I am the president and founder of... Precision Fabricating Incorporated, which is uh, located here in Skokie, on Springfield Boulevard. I just want to tell Mr. Rosen from Chicago that what he said went straight inside me like, uh, like an echo. If you have a question, Mr. Feldman. I kept saying to myself, Max, Max, somewhere I heard that speech before, but, but not here. Not in Chicago, not in America. But where did I hear that speech? I heard it in Germany. They came from the big city. Very fine, professional men. All members of the national Jewish organizations. I was very young, but I remember what they said. Nazis, stormtroopers, <laughs> hoodlums in the street. How many are there? A handful? They're just petty criminals. Don't pay attention. Go home, they said. Close the doors. Pull down the window shades. Don't look. Nothing will happen. Quarantine. They talked about quarantine. Strategies, game plans, tactics. I don't mean to offend you. But there was then a Mr. Rosen who said there are no danger to the safety and to the security of the Jews. So my question to Mr. Rosen is no. No, Mr. Feldman, no. Mr. Feldman, please. There'll be plenty of time for comment from the floor, and we do have outside guests. You know what this is? A tattoo. 
a number. Fear and Zwanzig, Fear Zex and Isaac. It's a concentration camp number. Do you know what that meant? Can you know what really happened? Can you know what the swastika was? Can you know what is a Nazi? Mr. Feldman, I understand. Believe me, there is no way of minimizing or arguing with the personal pain, the tragedy and suffering of people who have come through the Holocaust. I am trying to recommend a practical proven tactic for today's reality. No, sit down. no, sit down. no. I came here to sit, to listen, not to say anything. But I don't want to hear about tactics and strategies. This is not a game. I will not go home. I will not pull down the window shades. Not this time. Not in my own town, where I made a business and a home, where I raised my child. If the Nazi marches here in Skokie, you can believe me, I will be there. I will be there with baseball bats, with a gun, with anything. I will be yeah. in Skokie with the Nazi Arrive. Mr. Feldman, I understand your feelings, I assure you. Oh. Who could be a Jew and not understand? But I won't condone any call for violence. Forgive me, I mean no disrespect for the sufferings of Jews. But we cannot sink to the level of the Nazis themselves. Rabbi! The Jews, in particular, must always depend upon the protection of law. Rabbi! You don't know. You are a young man from Cincinnati. What do you know? Feldman is right. The whole tactic of nonviolence as developed by Gandhi. Excuse me. I don't have to hear from a yeshiva book about Mahatma Gandhi. You weren't there. You didn't see it happen. We did. We saw our mothers and fathers murdered. Children yes, beaten to that's death. Right, that's right. That's right. We saw it. We saw it. In my family, there is nobody. A cousin in Tel Aviv. That is all. My mama, my papa, my brothers and sisters, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, nobody. You want us to walk into the gas chambers again, is that what you want? I am an old man, but I would fight. I don't care if I drop dead from my heart. Who are the police? The police are going to let the Nazis march in, in this America? Please, look, we're all on the same side. The only question is, this is a matter of handling a very complex and sophisticated problem in a practical way. Believe me, we have had experience. The most effective way of handling this is to quarantine. <laughs> you and Mayor Smith. You want to avoid violence? I'll tell you how. If you want no violence, keep the Nazis out. Because if they march here, if they bring the swastika here, I swear to you, nothing, there is nothing will keep me from fighting. Them. And the memory of my mother. The Nazis will not march. On my life, on the grave of my mother, which was a lime pit in the death camp at Mauthausen, or a pile, a heap of naked Jewish bodies, on that grave, I swear it, 